Welcome everyone, my name is Scott and welcome back to this tutorial series on building a space shooter game with Phaser 3. Previously we worked on adding in collisions and we added in our health and our collider components for our ships. If you missed the previous videos, there will be links in the video description to the source code to this point as well as the source code for this video. There will also be links to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up, so let's get started. So now that we have our health and our collider components and we see that our collisions are working between our enemy and our player ships as well as our projectiles, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on our spawning logic for our enemies. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create some object pool for our two different enemy types uh, so that we can go ahead and keep respawning our enemies in our game uh, on an interval. And so for this, we're going to be creating some new components uh, in our game. So these ones won't be actually tied to our game object directly. They're going to be more system level components. And so this is where we're going to go ahead and create our enemy spawner, where we can provide it which type of enemy we want to spawn, as well as some type of configuration for how frequently we want them to go ahead and spawn. And so to go ahead and do this, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to use a phaser group, and we're going to use a lot of the same logic that we did for spawning our bullets. Uh, but instead of spawning a bullet game object, we're going to go ahead and spawn our custom class uh, for our enemy. And then just like how we did with our bullets, we're going to go ahead and make our enemies not active. And then that way we can reuse those game objects instead of having to create a new enemy game object every time we want to spawn an enemy in our game. All right, so to get started building our spawner, what we'll do is let's go into our components folder and we're going to go ahead and add a new subfolder. We're going to call it spawners. And then what we'll do is make a new file. We're going to call it enemy spawner component. So let's go ahead and export out our class. We'll do export class. Next we'll do enemy spawner component. Let's add in our constructor. And so for our spawning component, uh, what we're going to need is we'll need our phaser scene for we're going to go ahead and create our uh, group to add to our scene. We'll also need our configuration for how frequently we want to go ahead and spawn our enemies. And then we'll need a property to go ahead and keep track of our groups. Let's go ahead and add all these as properties to our class. So first we'll have our phaser scene. Then we'll have our spawn interval. And we'll have spawn at. And so spawn interval will be how frequently we're going to go ahead and spawn our enemies. And spawn at is when we'll go ahead and spawn our first enemy after our game starts. Finally, we'll go ahead and have our group. So now what we'll need to do is now we need to add these to our constructor as arguments. So we're going to have our phaser scene. Our next argument is going to be our enemy class. And so for our component, what we want to be able to do is we want to pass the name of the class, either fighter class or a scout enemy class and pass that here so then when we spawn our enemy we have a spawner tied to that particular enemy type. Besides that we're going to have a spawn configuration and this is going to have our spawn interval, our spawn at, and other things like that we need for creating our class. So now what we'll go ahead and do is let's go ahead and set up our scene. So we'll do this.scene will be equal to our scene. Next we want to go ahead and create our group. So we're going to do this. We'll do our group will be equal to a new this scene.add.group. Then we provide our group configuration. Uh, so one thing to call out is we're not going to go ahead and use a physics group for this, mainly because when we did our weapon component, we're letting Phaser automatically create our physics sprite for us. And so by using the physics group, Phaser knows to use a physics sprite over a regular sprite. For this group instance, we're going to go ahead and pass our class type through. And so we'll have a custom class of game objects we're creating. And so we don't need a physics group because we're going to rely on our default uh, enemy uh, classes we created. So then what we'll do is we'll add in our name. Uh, so similar to what we did for our bullets group, we want to give each, each spawner a unique name. So instead of bullets, uh, I'm going to go ahead and reference our spawner's name. And so we're just going to go ahead and do this. We're going to reference our constructor. And we'll grab our name property from it. And then we'll have a UUID. So next we need to go ahead and pass in our class type. And so this is what we'll use our enemy class. And so when we pass class type for our property, Phaser is going to use this and then use the new keyword to create an instance of what we pass here. Uh, so by passing in that class, we can now let Phaser create new instances of our game object. And so for this to work, we need to go ahead and return one of our Phaser game objects as the type that gets instantiated. And because we're extending our container here, that's why we can pass through our fighter enemy and our scout enemy. So Phaser is going to go ahead and use the new keyword to create a new instance of that container and then pass us these arguments that we're expecting. Next, we're going to go ahead and call, add a new property. We're going to do run child update. We're going to set that equal to true. And what this is going to do is for this group, for each game object, Phaser is automatically going to call the update method on that game object. All right, so after we create our group, let's go ahead and set our other properties. So let's go ahead and set up our spawn interval and our spawn at. So this is going to be equal to our spawn config. And we'll go ahead and add a property interval. Then we'll go ahead and do spawn at. And we're going to do spawn config and we're going to go ahead and do spawn at. 
All right, so now what we wanna go ahead and do for our spawner component is now we're gonna go ahead and add our event listeners for when our update method is invoked and when our world step method is invoked as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and jump over to our fighter enemy class. Let's go ahead and copy this logic here for we listen for our update. We're gonna paste that in our enemy spawner component. And then what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna end up removing this from our enemy classes since we passed in update is true here, but we'll come back to that. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we need to go ahead and update our references. We're gonna have this scene events on, we need to go ahead and add in our update method. So we're gonna jump over to update enemy. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this here. We're gonna go ahead and paste it. Then we have our update. So now we're gonna go ahead and change our update here. So instead of this dot once, we're gonna go ahead and do this scene events once. Then we'll go ahead and turn off our event that we're listening for. Next, we wanna go ahead and do our world step. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to our weapon component. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that line of code here. We're gonna go ahead and come back to our enemy spawner. Let's go ahead and paste it. And then we'll go ahead and change our reference. So we're gonna have this dot scene, our physics world. And then we'll go ahead and add in our world step. We'll go ahead and jump back to our weapon component. I'm gonna copy that method uh, with our arguments. Come back here, I'm gonna go and paste that. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn that off when our scene is destroyed. And so we'll use the off method. Now we need to update the event we're listening for. It's not tied to our game object, it's actually tied to our scene. So let's go ahead and copy this, we're going to replace that. Instead of update, we want to go ahead and listen for our destroy for our scene. All right, so what we did here is we just added two event listeners, uh, one for our scene uh, update event and one for our physics arcade world step event. And so we'll be using both of these for updating our game objects very similarly to like in our weapon component where we wanted to go ahead and spawn out new instances of our bullet We'll be doing the same logic for spawning out instances of our enemies. All right, so the next thing we'll need to do is now in our update method, this is what we'll need to go ahead and add in our logic for spawning out our enemies. Uh, so what we'll go ahead and do is I'm gonna jump over to our weapon component and we're gonna wanna use similar logic to uh, how we're spawning our bullets here. And so basically we wanna go ahead and check our spawn at time and then decrement our delta time, similar to what we do to our interval here. And then once we are and then if we're greater than zero, we wanna go ahead and return. So we're just gonna copy these lines of code here. We're gonna go ahead and paste it. Let's go ahead and update our references. And so we're gonna do spawn at, we'll go ahead and subtract our delta time. And if we are greater than zero, we wanna go ahead and return. As soon as we are at zero or below, now we wanna go ahead and spawn an enemy in our game. And so to go ahead and do this, we wanna go ahead and grab an enemy from our group. And so we'll do do const, we'll do enemy, it's gonna be equal to this, our group, and we'll use the get method. And now we need to go ahead and specify our X and Y position of where we're gonna position our game object. And so I'm just gonna use X for as a placeholder for now, and we'll do negative 20 for our Y value. So our get method is a little bit different than our get first dead method that we use for our bullet group. And so what Git's gonna do is it's going to loop through our child game objects and try to find one that's not active. If one's not found, is gonna go ahead and create a brand new instance of the game object that's tied to this group for us and return that new instance. And so for our enemy groups, we're not gonna have a max capacity for how many enemies we'll go ahead and spawn. And then that way we don't ever have to worry about uh, having one of our game objects be dead. We'll reuse them when they're available uh, in our game. So now for our X position, what we wanna go ahead and do is we wanna spawn our enemy randomly in our scene instead of in a hard-coded position. And so what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and calculate that. So we do const x is gonna be equal. And so we're gonna do a random value. And so for that, we're gonna do phaser, we're gonna do math, we're gonna do random. And now we wanna do between. And so this allows us to provide a min value and a max value. And phaser is gonna return a value somewhere in that range. And so for this, we'll do 30. And then we're gonna reference our scene. We'll grab our scale. We'll grab our width property. We're gonna go ahead and subtract 30 from that. And so that's just going to give us a little bit of leeway uh, for our game. So that way it spawns somewhere within like this uh, frame like this. So then after we spawn our enemy game object, we want to go ahead and update our spawn at property. And so we'll do this that spawn at will be equal to this, our spawn interval. All right, so if we want to start te uh, testing some of the logic we added, we need to go ahead and create an instance of our component. Uh, so what we'll do is let's come into our game scene. And let's go ahead and comment out our enemy code for the time being, and we'll also comment out our overlap checks. So after we create our player, let's go ahead and create a new spawner. So what we'll do is we're gonna do const, we'll make a variable do scout spawner. We're gonna set that equal to a new enemy spawner component. And now we need to go ahead and provide our scene, so we'll do this. Our enemy class, so let's go ahead and do our scout enemy. 
And now we need to provide our configuration. So for our configuration, we'll need our interval and we'll need our spawn at properties. And so what we'll do is let's go into our conga file and we'll go ahead and add these. So we'll go ahead and copy this kind of code here. We'll do our scout first. And then so we'll have enemy scout and we'll do group spawn interval. And for our interval, we'll go ahead and do five seconds. So we'll have 5,000 milliseconds. Let's copy that. Go ahead and paste. And then we'll do our spawn app property. Then we'll go ahead and do spawn start. So this will be when they start spawning in our game. And so we'll do one second after the game starts. Let's copy both of those. We'll go ahead and paste them onto our fighter. And we'll go ahead and update our name. And so we'll have fighter. And so for our fighter, we'll go ahead and spawn at an interval of 6,000 milliseconds, and we'll start at 3,000 milliseconds. So back in our game scene, let's... All right, then what we'll do is let's go ahead and import our configs. We'll do import star as config from our config.js file. And now for our configuration for our scout, let's add our interval. And then we're going to go ahead and do our config. We'll do our enemy scout spawn group interval. And now let's do our spawn at. We'll go ahead and copy this. We'll go ahead and paste it. And now we just want to go ahead and do our spawn start. And so after we save, we should see right away in our game that our enemy starts spawning and we'll see it starts respawning on a pattern. And so it's going to go ahead and spawn at a different X position. And then it's going to go ahead and come down to our player and it's going to keep respawning. And so now that we have our enemy group spawning our enemy game objects, what we're going to do next is now we're going to re-enable our collisions and we're going to update our checks to use our enemy group here. So what we'll do is let's go ahead and uncomment this code here. And for this to work, instead of referencing our enemy, we need to reference our enemy group from our spawner. So let's go into our spawner component. We'll need to add that as a getter. So what we'll do is we'll do get and we'll do phaser group. We'll go ahead and return this. We'll return our group. So back in our game scene, what we can do now, instead of passing our enemy, we want to go ahead and reference our spawner. So we'll have our scout spawner. And then we want to go ahead and grab our phaser group. And so next, we'll also go ahead and do the same thing for our player's weapon group uh, and our enemy. Uh, so let's go ahead and do our scout spawner, and we'll go ahead and do our phaser group. And then real quick, what we're going to do is let's go ahead and comment out our code here. We're checking for our enemy's bullets with our player's ship, and we'll come back to that. All right, so go ahead and test our code. If we go ahead and try destroying our enemy's ship, oh, looks like we have a few bugs. So the first one is after the ship is destroyed, their box collider still hit our player's ship, and we were still destroyed. Then when our enemy respawned, it looks like they never reappeared in our game, but we can see that their box actually disappeared. And so what we need to do is after our ship is destroyed and we go to respawn it, we need to make it reactive. Uh, so what we'll need to do is after we respawn our enemy group, we need to actually go ahead and make them active again. Uh, so if we go into our scout enemy class, and so what's happening right now is after our ship dies, we go ahead and set it to be not active and to be not visible. And so what this is going to do is it's going to make it eligible to be respawned from our phaser group object. However, because we made it not visible, we need to make it revisible once we spawn that game object. And so if we come back to our enemy spawn component, what we need to do is when we grab a new game object from our group, we need to go ahead and reset some of our properties, like reset its health. And then that way we can respawn a fresh instance of our enemy. And so to go ahead and do that, what we're going to do on our scout enemy class is we're going to add a reset method that's going to go ahead and reset some of our components as well as that state that we need. And then so what we'll do is before our update method, let's go ahead and add in reset. And so inside this method here, we'll want to go ahead and make our game object active and visible again. We'll reset our health component and we'll go ahead and reset all of our other components as well. All right, so the first thing we'll do is let's go ahead and copy these two lines of code here, and we're going to go ahead and set them to be true. So we'll make our container visible. We'll make our container active. We'll go ahead and make our container visible. Then we want to go ahead and reset our components. So we'll start with our health component. So with our health component, let's call reset to reset our health back to full health. And then we're going to go ahead and reset our vertical and our horizontal movement components. So we'll do this. We'll do our vertical movement component. Let's do reset. And then we'll do this. We'll do our horizontal movement component, we'll do reset. All right, then what we want to do is back on our enemy spawner components, go ahead and call that new method. So we'll do enemy, we're going to do reset. Now if we go ahead and test our changes, if we go ahead and destroy our scout enemy, our enemy should respawn. However, we have this bug where the enemy is swerving across our scene. So what's happening is in our scout enemy, when we create our input component, we created the start X, and what that does, that determines where our enemy is actually going to move in our scene. And so after we respawn our game object, or choosing a new x value and so we need to recalculate that maximum movement for the area our game object can move and so we're going to do this we'll make a new uh setter and so we'll do set we'll do start x we'll have our value 
and we'll go ahead and do this. Our start x is going to be equal to our value. So now back in our scout enemy, we want to go ahead and set that for our component. So in our reset method, uh, what we'll do is we'll do this. We'll do our input component. We're going to call start. We're going to set start x. We'll set it equal to this dot x to grab our x position from our container. So now if we go ahead and test, let's try destroying our enemy ship. It should respawn, and if it's on the other side, we'll see now it's moving over here where it's supposed to. All right, so now we did that with our scout enemy. Let's go ahead and copy this logic here, and we're going to place it over in our fighter enemy. So what we'll do is let's go ahead and add a reset method. We don't need to call our start x, and we don't have a horizontal movement component. So go ahead and reset. Uh, we don't need to do that. All right, so the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is let's jump back to our game scene, and we're going to create a spawner for our fighter enemy. So we're going to go ahead and copy this logic here. I'm going to go ahead and paste it. I'm going to call this fighter spawner and then for our class type we'll have our fighter enemy and now we're going to go ahead and update our references here so we'll have our enemy fighter we'll have our groom our group spawn interval I'm going to paste that we'll do our spawn start all right and then what we'll go ahead and do is let's go ahead and add in our overlap for that group so let's copy this here we're going to go ahead and paste it and so we'll have our fighter spawner group and then let's go ahead and do the same thing for our weapon let's copy and paste this and we'll go ahead and do our fighter spawner phaser group. So now what we should be able to do is back in our scene, we should be able to test. We should see our fighters are now spawning. And we'll see now when our ships collide with them, they are destroyed just like we expect. And then we'll see our enemies are still respawning just like we want them to. So one other thing we need to do is now we need to go ahead and re-enable our overlap check for our enemies weapon uh, group and our player ship. And so in order to do this, we're actually going to have to modify our logic for how we're checking for our overlap. And so currently how our code was structured before was after we create our enemy instance, we can reference that game weapon group from that enemy. Now with our new spawner classes, we're not spawning our game objects and creating them until we actually need them from our pool. And so what this means is for each new enemy that spawns, we need to have this collider enabled so we can actually check for collisions between that enemy's weapon group and our player. And in order to do this, we'll need to know when we create a brand new instance of our enemy. And this is actually really easy to do in Phaser. There's actually a property we can pass when we create our group or a callback to be notified when we create a new instance of our game object that we specify here. And so to go ahead and do that, what we'll do is after a run child update, we're going to do create callback. And so with this, we can go ahead and provide our callback, and we're going to receive an instance of the enemy that was instantiated. And so we'll have our enemy for an argument, and now in our callback function, now we can do something with it. And so what we're going to want to do in this method is now we want to go ahead and we need a way to notify our game scene that, hey, we have a brand new uh, enemy game object, so now we need to add that collider. And so to go ahead and do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new component. And so from our initial diagram, this is going to be the events component uh, that we detailed here. And so this component will be responsible for sending out events that we want to use in our game. And this will be one of them. Anytime we spawn an enemy, we're going to go ahead and emit an event. And then the other thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to add a new method to our enemy classes for init. And that's going to allow us to initialize our game object with any additional things that we need that we can't do inside our constructor. And so when we create our instance of our enemy class here, we're just going to go ahead and create an instance. That means our constructor will run, but if there's anything else we want to go ahead and pass to it, we can't do that, but we can do that here by calling a special init method. And so that's where we'll go ahead and we're going to pass through our event bus component to our enemy. So then that way we can initialize our components that we need and then we can actually use that event bus to emit our events. And so what we're going to go ahead and do is first for each of our enemy classes, let's go ahead and add that in, uh, that init method, and then we'll come back and we'll add our event component. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll do enemy, and we're going to call a new method, and we're going to call it init. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. We're going to go ahead and come over to our fighter enemy class, and let's go ahead and add that method. And so right above reset, we'll go ahead and add in init. And then what we're going to go ahead and do for the time being is we're going to take all of our component logic where we create all of our components. We're going to move that out of our constructor and we're going to go ahead and place that down in our init method. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy all this code here. We're going to go ahead and place it down here. And then we'll leave all of our code for creating our game objects and our sprites alone uh, up there. And so what this is going to allow us to do is now we're going to go ahead and create instances of our components and then we'll emit our event. And what that's going to allow us to do is now that we have our components in place, we can go ahead and register our overlap between our new fighter instance 
and our weapon uh, group object. Later on, if there's anything else we need to pass, we're gonna go ahead and pass it into our init method, and then that way we can instantiate our components with those dependencies. And so we'll need that later for our event bus as well, because some of our components are going to evolve, and we'll need our event bus. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna copy this real quick, and jump over to our scout enemy. We'll go ahead and add that in. And then we'll go ahead and do the same thing. So let's copy our components. We'll take them out of our constructor. We're going to do it inside our init method here. So now what we need to do is now we need to go ahead and create that events component. Uh, so to go ahead and do that, let's go ahead and go into our components. We'll make a new folder. We're going to call this events. And we'll make a new file. We're going to call this event bus component. So let's go ahead and export out our class. And we'll add in our constructor. So now for our event bus component, we need a way to listen for events and to emit events. And there's a built-in class that we can use in Phaser uh, to go ahead and create this component. And so we're gonna use the Phaser Events Event Meter. And in Phaser, all of your game objects actually have access to this. Uh, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is so I jump back to our game scene. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and recreate our enemy instance here real quick. So we have our IntelliSense. And so we'll have our enemy. And now if I do on, what this does, this reference an event meter that's associated with that game object that was created. And so this is already built into most of the things in Phaser because we can also do that on our scene. So like on our scene, I can do this events and I can do on. Now I'm referencing the event meter on my scene instance. And so uh, this event meter in Phaser is really robust and we're gonna go ahead and create a new instance that we can use for our purpose. And so to go ahead and do that, we're actually gonna go ahead and just extend the, that game object. We're gonna go ahead and extend that class. We'll do extends, we'll do Phaser events and we'll do our event meter. So what we'll do in our constructor is we're just going to go ahead and call super to go ahead and call our parent uh, constructor. And so now that we have our base uh, component down, what we need to do is now we need to add in our events that we want to go ahead and listen for. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create an object of our event types that will support. So we'll do export cons. We're going to do custom events. And so we're going to set this equal to object freeze. And so this will be an object. And so we'll do enemy init. And for our keys and values, these will just be the event types that we support. We'll use the same value as our key. And then we're also gonna add one for enemy destroyed. And so what we'll be able to do with this event later is that's how we're gonna control when we play our animation for where a ship explodes. And we can use that for keeping track of like points. So if an enemy is worth so many points, they're destroyed, we can increment a score mechanic later. So now with our new event bus component, what we want to do is we want to make this reusable across all of our components. And so we're going to go ahead and create an instance of it in our game scene, and then we're going to pass it through to any other components that need it. Uh, so what we'll do is let's go ahead and comment back out our enemy code here. So right before we create our player, we'll create a new event bus component. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do const. We'll do event bus component is going to be equal to a new event bus component. And now what we can do is we can pass that through to our spawner components. And so we'll go ahead and do that. And so we'll have our event bus component. And we'll pass that to both of our instances. So now back on our enemy spawner component, let's go ahead and add that as an argument to our constructor. So we'll have our event bus component. And then what we'll go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and pass that through to our enemy uh, when we uh, initialize it. So now what we can do is in our fighter enemy class, for example, let's go ahead and add that as an argument. So then what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and store our reference to this on our class, and then we'll go ahead and emit our new event. So let's make a new private property. We're gonna do event bus component is equal to our event bus component that we passed through. Let's come to the top of our class and we'll go ahead and add in that property. We'll also do that to our scout enemy. And then so what we can do in our class is at the bottom of our edit method, we're gonna go ahead and emit our event. So to do that, we're going to reference our event bus component. We're going to go ahead and use the emit property. And then what we'll do is now we go ahead and pass through our event. And so now we're going to reference our custom events and we're going to use the enemy in it. And so what we'll also want to do is we're going to want to pass through our enemy instance. So then that way we have it for reference anywhere that we need it. And so we'll go ahead and pass through this. So let's go ahead and copy that. We'll come over to our scout enemy class. We'll go ahead and paste that as well. Oh, and then let's go ahead and make sure we import our custom events. And then we're going to come back to our game scene. So now that we're emitting our events, now we need to actually listen for them in our scene. So now we can react to it. All right, so what we're going to go ahead and do is now we need to listen for our event. So we'll go ahead and do our event bus component. We're going to do on. Now we need to reference our custom events and we'll do enemy in it. And then we have our callback function that will be invoked when this event uh, fires. And so we know we're going to receive an instance of our enemy uh, because we passed through our game object. 
And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna do console log and I'm gonna go ahead and console log at our game object. All right, so we go ahead and save and test. What we should see is as our enemy spawn our game, we now see our console log for our new game object. However, we do see another bug happening. And what that is, is every time one of our enemies shows up in our game, we're now invoking our init method for our callback here. And so what's supposed to happen is we want to reuse our game objects, but what we're seeing here is we're creating a bunch of new instances. And what's happening is for our enemies, when they're not destroyed, once they get off our screen, we have no way to destroy them. And so we're going to need to add logic for once they're off our screen, we want to go ahead and make them inactive so we'll be able to reuse those. And so before we do that, let's go ahead and finish up our logic before we add our overlap for our enemy's weapon, and then we'll go ahead and fix that bug. So what we'll do is in our game scene, what we want to do is for when we have our enemy in it, we want to go ahead and check which type of object it is. And if it's our fighter enemy, that's when we'll go ahead and do our check for our overlap for our enemy's uh, weapon group and our player. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to uncomment this code here. I'm going to go ahead and copy that code and we're going to go ahead and move it inside our uh, event listener here. So then what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to add if statements. We'll do if our game object. We're going to reference the constructor on our game object and then we'll grab the name. And so if our constructor game object name does not equal our fighter enemy, then what we'll go ahead and do is we're just going to return early because we don't need to add that check because our other enemy type doesn't have a weapon. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do return. So then what we'll do is we'll have our physics overlap. We'll have it between our player. So instead of enemy, we'll have our game object, our weapon game object group. We'll have our player, our projectile. And then we should have the same logic here. And then we should go ahead and change our enemy reference here. We'll go ahead and save. So what we should be able to do now is in our scene, if we go ahead and have our player line up so we get hit by our enemy's bullets, we'll see now we're taking damage uh, on our ship. So now for our other bug, what we'll want to do is let's jump over to our enemy spawner component. And what we'll do is in our world step update, this is where we'll add that check to see if our ships are off our screen. Then we'll go ahead and make them inactive so we can reuse them. All right, so then what we'll want to do is now we need to grab all of our children game objects and see if they're actually active. So we'll go ahead and reference our group. We'll call the get children method. And then we're going to use our for each method to loop, uh, loop through them. So then for each enemy, what we'll go ahead and do is we're going to make sure they're uh, active. So if our enemy is not active, we want to go ahead and return. If the enemy is active, now we need to check their position. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll check our enemy's Y position. And so if it's greater than this scene, our scale and our height, and we're going to add a buffer. So we'll add 50 pixels. So then that way, you know, it's completely uh, below the bottom of our screen. Then we want to go ahead and make them not active. And so what we'll do is let's jump over to our fighter enemy class. I'm going to copy these two lines of code here. We're going to go ahead and paste it. And so we'll change our reference from this to enemy. And we don't want them to be visible and we don't want them to be active. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a console log to our create callback here. And we're just going to log out our enemy game object that was created. So now back in our scene, we should be able to go ahead and test. So we'll see our scout enemy spawns, our fighter enemy spawns, and then our new scout spawns, and then our new fighter spawns. And we still only have two instances of our game objects just like we want. All right, so one last change we're going to do is going to be tied to our fighter enemy and our scout enemy classes. Uh, so we restructure some of our code for how our enemies spawn. And what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to add a safeguard to our update method to make sure this doesn't run until after our init method has already been ran for our game objects. And so when we create an instance of our game object, because our group is automatically calling the update method for us automatically uh, for each tick of our game loop, we want to make sure that our update loop doesn't actually run until we have all of the components and everything's been set up for our game object that we expect. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a property to our classes to keep track of this game object's been initialized and only if it has, then we're going to go ahead and do this check here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into the top of our class and we're going to go ahead and new, add a new private property and we'll do is initialized. And what we'll do is in our constructor, we're going to go ahead and set that equal to false. Uh, so what we'll do is right at the top, we'll do this is initialized. We're going to say equal to false. And then we'll come down to our init method. And at the very bottom, after we do everything we need, we're going to go ahead and set it equal to true. So now what we can do is in our update method, we're just going to add that safety check and we'll say if. So if this is initialized as false, we want to go ahead and just return early. All right, so let's go ahead and copy that. We'll come over to our scout enemy class. Let's go ahead and paste that in our update method. And then we'll go ahead and add the same logic that we did in our other class. Let's copy this and come over to our 
init method. We'll go ahead and paste it. We'll come up to the top of our class. And then finally, let's go ahead and grab the value from our constructor. And we'll go ahead and set it. All right, and so all we're doing there, that's just a safeguard, just so we don't have any race conditions. So then that way, any components we want to reference, we already have them, and we know our game object's all ready to go uh, for our scene. All right, so now we have our two enemy spawner groups working, and we see we're going to keep respawning our enemy instances. That actually brings this video to an end. In our next video, we're going to go ahead and work on making a new spawner class for our explosions, and then that way, as we destroy the enemy ships, we'll go ahead and play an explosion uh, animation uh, when that happens. Uh, so as a reminder, there's a link in the description of the video to the clear source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please see some links on your screen now.